Hello everyone. Thank you for watching our video. I'm Sachika Shibukawa from Kyoto University. Today, I'm going to talk about a questionnaire survey. The title of the paper I will present today is The Relationship Between Out of Class Strategies and In Class Strategies in a Flipped Classroom. In recent years, Flipped classrooms have been becoming widespread in higher education all over the world. A flipped classroom consists of two learning phases, out of class time and in class, of, in class time. The learning processes in each learning phase are different, as are the learning environments and activities. The concept of a flipped classroom is simple, but its structure and learning processes are complex. Very superficially flipped classes are not always sufficient. Some problems have become apparent by distinguishing between learning phases. For example, Shibukawa and Taguchi reported that some students couldn't su sufficiently understand the learning content during out of class time due to their lack of self regulated learning skill. Therefore, in order to deepen students' understanding through both out of class and in class time, we should grasp how students learn in each learning phases in order to consider how to better integrate those two learning phases activities. But previous research mainly focused on comparing traditional teaching styles versus flipped teaching style or comparing various learning outcomes. So there is little research on students' learning that discriminates between learning phases. Considering this distinction will explicate necessary spots in each learning phase in order to enhance students' understanding throughout the flipped classroom. Therefore, we decided to focus on learning strategies for each learning phase in a flipped classroom. The reason why we focus on learning strategies is that they are said to affect grades significantly. Previously, there have been some studies about learning strategies which distinguished well between learning phases. Sun and her colleague investigated the relationship between self-regulated learning strategies during pre-class time and learning outcomes of preparation, as well as between self-regulated learning strategies during in-class time and learning outcomes of the class. Chen and her colleague interviewed students who took part in uh, flipped classroom courses uh, about how they use self-regulated learning strategies during the pre-class time. Uh, however, they didn't investigate, investigate the relationship between learning strategies across learning phases. Having said this, the purpose of this study is to clarify the relationship between each learning strategy across learning phases. Specifically, we set the following research questions. First, which learning strategies in class could be used depending on the frequency of students' out-of-class learning? Second, which out-of-class learning strategies affect which in-class learning strategies? I'm going to explain more about them in the next part. We chose the flipped classroom of a statistic course offered in last year at a private medical university in Japan. Flipped classrooms were conducted six times during the 16 weeks. 281 undergraduate students were enrolled in this course, and the number of valid responses was 222. Out of class time, students watched lecture videos made by instructors and answered multiple choice questions. In class time, first, Instructors explained the answers to the pre-assignment and developed the lecture content, uh, developed the lecture content for the um, lecture videos. Then students tried to apply the newly gained knowledge to advanced problems 
making the null hypothesis and summarizing the results of analysis on their own. Here, I will explain instrumentations used for the questionnaire. First, we used MSLQ made by Pintrich and Degroot. We decided to revise and use use those as Sun and her colleague did. Sun and her colleague tried to revise MSLQ and make two types of questionnaire to fit each learning phase of the flipped classroom. So we translated and modified the original scales description into Japanese in order to fit the context of out of class and in class learning. The factor structure was determined according to the structure outlined by Pintrich and De Groot. First, MSLQ questionnaire was about out of class learning strategies. It consisted of two scales. The cognitive strategies consisted of rehearsal, elaboration, organization, and critical thinking. The metacognitive strategy consisted of 12 items. Second, MSLQ questionnaire was about in class learning strategies using the same scales as out of class learning strategies. All the survey items were measured on a, a seven-point record type scale ranging from one up to seven. Second, we used the frequency of out of class learning in order to grasp how often students worked on out-of-class learning, we set six items and asked students to select one of them. We classified 222 students into six groups of G1 to G6 based on their answer. Below matrix is a course schedule. Flipped classroom was introduced after a midterm exam, which was an essay. So, Students were sorted into the resulting groups before and after the midterm essay. The questionnaire was conducted in the 15th week. I will explain the results of data screening. The internal reliability of each measure was assessed using Cronbach's coefficient alpha. Based on the calculated data, we deleted two items that decreased the reliability of metacognition factor. Then, we judged that each subscale of the cognitive strategies provided enough values. Descriptive, stu descriptive statistics and correlation coefficients for each major score are summarized in below table. From this, we found that all the subscale scores had a strong correlation yellow set. Considering Considering correlation coefficients between the same factors were relatively strong, it is suggested that students tend to use the same learning strategies across both phases. Next, I'll talk about results to investigate first research question, which learning strategies in class could be used depending on the frequency of students out of class learning. We conducted a two-way mixed design ANOVA. We set the group of the frequency of students out of class learning as independent variables and in-class learning strategies as dependent variables. As a result, the main effects of the both group and MSLQ were significant, but the interaction between group and MSLQ was not. We then conducted post hoc multiple comparison tests with Holmes methods. In terms, in, term of, in terms of group, the results showed that G6 was significantly smaller than G1, G2, and G3. This indicates that students who seldom learn during the out of class time use less in class strategies compared to students who did out of class learning. Among in-class learning strategies, the results showed that elaboration was higher than organization and critical thinking, while metacognition was also higher than organization and critical thinking. These results suggest that many students tend to use elaboration and metacognition strategies in class. 
Next, I'll talk about results to investigate the second research question. Which out of class learning strategies affect which in class learning strategies? We conducted structural equation modeling. I'll show the results focusing especially on in class higher order cognitive strategies. It is said that rehearsal strategy is a lower order cognitive strategy and organization, elaboration, and critical thinking strategy are higher order cognitive strategies. Using higher order cognitive strategies are important to have a better understanding. Therefore, we investigate which out of class strategies affects in class higher order cognitive strategies. As a result, we found that out of class elaboration and metacognition, metacognition affected in class elaboration. Uh, in addition, out of class organization and critical thinking affected in class critical thinking. From this, we found that the use of in class elaboration and critical thinking strategies were only related to the use of out of class higher order cognitive strategies. In addition, out of class rehearsal, organization, and metacognition affected in class organization. Using the out of class lower order cognitive strategy rehearsal was related to the use of the in class higher order cognitive strategy, but its impact was smaller than other out of class strategies. Therefore, we found that the use of out of class out of class higher order cognitive strategies affected the use of in class higher order cognitive strategies. In other words, the only use of lower order learning strategies during out of class may not deepen a student's understanding during face to face class time because it had a little effect on the use of in class higher order cognitive strategies. It was also revealed that, basically, the same learning strategy was strongly related across the learning phases, but each out-of-class learning strategy also affected different in-class learning strategies. Particularly, out-of-class metacognitive strategies were well related to the use of other in-class strategies, rehearsal, elaboration, and organization. It had been already known that the use of out-of-class metacognitive strategy was needed in a flipped classroom. However, it was a new finding that the use of out-of-class metacognitive strategy affects the use of various in-class learning strategies. It emphasizes the importance of the use of out-of-class metacognitive strategy. I'd like to finish by summarizing the main findings of this study. We investigated two research questions and, and revealed the following findings. From those findings, simply the, only, simply the only use of lower order learning strategies during out of class time might not be sufficient to enhance the use of various higher order learning cognitive strategies and deepen student understanding during in-class time. Thus, it is suggested that instructors should help students to use higher order learning cognitive strategies and metacognitive strategy during out-of-class time. Finally, future research should investigate that the influence of out-of-class and in-class learning strategies on grades. Uh, that concludes my presentation. Thank you.